Okay, so Zashun and I will be giving a presentation on the string-based representation of molecules. Uh, more specifically, we'll be going over smiles, sparks, and selfies. Okay, so just a quick overview. Um, we're going to review some previously developed and current methods for the string-based representation of molecules. Um, this includes generating and using selfies, as well as a performance comparison of some of these methods. Okay, so what are string-based representations? Um, they, are, they give you the ability to represent molecules as a string of text. Um, some examples include smarts, smiles, deep smiles, and selfies. Um, and they're very useful for a lot of computational methods, including deep gen generative models, which we'll get into later. Um, but there have been issues with previous string-based representation methods, um, which has led to the development of more robust methods. So to start out, I'll be covering SMILES, which is Simplified Molecular Input Line Entry System. Um, and it is a line notation to describe molecules and it can come in two different forms, isomeric or canonical, meaning that the isomers can be specified with isomeric or canonical, which is a standardization of the SMILE string. And these are not mutually exclusive, they can be used together. Um, in this figure I've shown here, you can see that each of these SMILE strings corresponds to one of these structures. Um, next is SMARTS, which is the SMILES Arbitrary Target Specification. Now, this is used to specify substructural patterns of molecules. So, um, shown here is a SMART string, which would cover all four of these cyclic structures. Um, and we can do this by specifying multiple bonds and atom types in the same string. Now, there are some drawbacks to SMARTS and SMILES. Um, a lot of the smart and smile strings do not correspond to valid molecules. Um, so deep smiles was developed in 2018 to try to um, address this issue, which it fixed issues with generating molecular graphs, but could still violate basic chemical rules. So shown here is a smile string corresponding to this benzene ring, where the ring closure is occurring at these terminal C1s. And in the deep smiles, this is denoted by the C6 here, which means this carbon is connected to the atom six positions before it. Now, why that's important is with the smile string in larger systems, instead of these terminal C1s, you can have this ring closure defined as these terminal C2s, C3s, et cetera. Um, whereas with deep smiles, it's always represented in the form shown here. So there are some advantages of using deep smiles over the generic smiles, um, being that it can recognize invalid strings, such as this double closing parentheses um, string here, or this string, which does not have a atom six positions before it closes this ring. Um, so this solved some issues with the smile strings, um, however, not all of them. So shown here again as an example, the smile string open and closing parentheses. Um, denoting the branching of the molecule, and the deep smiles just showing these closing parentheses. So more recently, a, another string-based representation um, is selfies, which is self-referencing embedded strings. Now with selfies, all molecules that have a selfies string are considered valid molecules. Um, so this is much more robust than these smile strings and all molecules can be represented using selfies. So I've shown a figure here, A and B, the same structure. However, um, we have this smile string here where these rings are denoted by this one here, it's connected to here and two is connected to two. However, in the selfie string, you can see it's quite differently formatted where um, each of the ring closing events is defined by this ring here. Now, um, random mutations of smiles and selfies uh, resulted in all of these selfie strings being valid and none of these smile strings being valid. So you can see that um, with the single and double mutations shown here, um, just throwing in some random invalid um, characters in the smile string will um, give an invalid molecule, whereas with the selfie string, it will always give a valid molecule no matter what. 
Okay, so how is this derived? Um, so we have these derivation rules shown in this table here. And uh, for an example, I've decided to choose this structure here and the corresponding selfie string and decode it to a smile string. So we're always going to start at the stated derivation x sub zero shown here. From there, we can add this fluorine giving f of x sub one, which will give us our new state of derivation. Adding this double bonded carbon will give us c x sub three. If we add that to the string. We will then start at x sub three, add this double bonded carbon to get this double bonded carbon x sub two add that to the structure. And then finally, starting out with the state der derivation is X sub two, we can add this nitrogen to get this double bond of nitrogen to give us the final smile string. Now there are a lot of advantages to using selfies. Um, I've described kind of structurally what those advantages might be. However, Zashun is gonna talk more about how these um, advantages correspond to corresponding deep generative models um so yeah uh, yeah so i will introduce how to generate and use a selfie so first step you should use in the pip to install this selfie package to use when you want to utilize a platform to to uh, build a, a deep learning model to learn it. And here is an example. So first step, you should import self as this package to use. And uh, here is an example of the smells. So you can utilize the uh, uh, selfies.encoder this function to uh, transfer the smells to uh, selfies. And also you can uh, utilize the decoder to transfer uh, selfies to smells. And the next step, you also can utilize the uh, a function of selfies to know uh, what's the length of the selfies. And uh, as you know, when, when we want to encode a selfies and to learn it by the deep learning model, we should split this selfies. And uh, to let the deep learning know which part we should learn by together. So uh, here selfies also provide this uh, function to do that. So you can utilize the split selfies to split it. But you know, when we want to utilize the smells as input to learn by the machine learning model, you should split the smells by, by yourself to define which part you should learn by uh, in, together. And the uh, next step, I will introduce uh, what's the uh, the model performance uh, learned by uh, learned with smells and uh, selfies. So here is the results for the deep generative models. So there are two uh, representative uh, deep generative models. One is variational autoencoder, and another one is generative at the adversarial uh, networks. So for the uh, variational autoencoder, it is composed by encoder and decoder. So each time you take the, the uh, um, a molecule as input, and first step, you utilize the encoder to encode it to a continuous latent space. And next step, you, you utilize the decoder to decode it to uh, reproduce it. So uh, finally, you got a discrete sequence. So ideally, this sequence should be a, a valid molecule. So uh, in this model, what it, we indeed want to learn is to build, uh, is to learn the latent space, which contains as much uh, molecule knowledge as possible. So next step, uh, next step. So we test this, uh, we test the uh, model performance using uh, a lens with smells and the selfies. So first step, we test the validity of the latent space. Uh, so general idea is we randomly, we randomly sample the points from the latent space and utilize the decoder to decode it a sequence. So we want this sequence to correspond to a valid molecule. And uh, we want every point we sampled from the latent space should be correspond to a uh, uh, valid uh, valid molecules. So it is re very important for the model interpretation. So we test this. Uh, we test it in this way. So uh, here is the result for the smells and selfies. So we randomly sample for, uh, the points from the latent space and to decode it to be a, a molecule and test if it is a valid or invalid. 
So red part represents the, the invalid molecule and the green part represents the valid, mo va valid molecules. And we can find uh, the left part, the smells uh, performance means that only a small fraction of the space correspond to a uh, valid molecules. But for the surface, 100% space correspond to valid molecules. And next step, we also uh, tested the molecule density of the latent space. So this idea is we want to uh, randomly sample the points from the uh, latent space and to decode it to a molecule. And uh, what we uh, ideally we we want to get as much valid versus uh, valid diverse molecules as possible. So uh, it means we want the the we want the latent space can contain uh, highly diversity. So uh, the method is we sample randomly sample points in the latent space and stop after 20 samples didn't produce any new molecules. So this figure shows the X axis represents the standard deviation and the Y axis represents the number of diverse molecules. And the green part is uh, uh, molecules uh, generated by the cell phase and the blue part represents the uh, results of the smells. We can find a uh, variational autoencoder trained with cell phase can contain uh, 100 times more valid diverse molecules than it's trained with um, smells. And we also test uh, the performance uh, on the generative, uh, sorry, next slide. We also test the uh, performance on the generative adversarial networks. So again, it's composed with generator and a discriminator. So generator uh, as function is we want, uh, it can randomly sample the points from the latent space and use, utilize this generator to generate a molecule. And the discriminator task is uh, we fit in both the real molecules and also the generated molecules. The discriminator should can identify which is the real and which is the generated. So the generator task is, we want to generate the molecule which cannot be identified by the discriminator. So ideally we want to, uh, after the training process, we want to get a generator which can learn the distribution of the uh, molecules very well. So uh, we also test the uh, performance on this, on this model. So uh, next slide. So we also test the molecule density of the latent space. Uh, it is the same as the, uh, when we tested, testing, uh, tested in the variational autoencoder model. So the method is we train the uh, GAN using uh, 200 different hyperparameter settings, both for smells and selfies. So after training, uh, we sample each model uh, 10,000 times and uh, calculate the number of unique valid mo molecules. And here is the result. The X axis represents the epoch and the Y represents the ratio of the diverse valid molecules. And we can find the green part, uh, which, which is trained with the cell phase, can produce uh, around 80% uh, diverse molecules. Well, the GAN, which is produces the, uh, which is trained with smell strings can only result in maybe uh, around 18% diverse molecules. So uh, in a word, next slide. We can find uh, surface is a uh, human readable and 100% robust method. It means, uh, I don't know if you faced with this problem where you want to transfer uh, the smell stream to a graph, uh, to a molecular graph. Sometimes I cannot transfer it. Of course, uh, smells is not correspond to a valid molecule, but for the surface, it always can correspond to a valid molecule and it can transfer to a molecular uh, graph using the selfies. And uh, in the generative task, we can also see that selfies can lead to a significantly uh, higher uh, diversity of molecules and it can also improve the, uh, uh, it can also improve the, uh, the, sorry, uh, the, the uh, validity of the latent space. Yeah, so that's all for our presentation.
main questions. Here, just 